In what circumstances would you want to create views in SQL Server? I'm Philip Burton of idodata.com. So here we have our select statement. Now I could save this by going to File, Save, and then it would save it as a standalone SQL file. But what I can also do is save it within the database by creating a view. So create view and name of view, the word as, and that's it. Yes, you can make views a lot more complicated. For instance, you can add encryption, you can add schema binding, but at its essence, creating a view is as simple as create view, name of view, as, and then your select statement. So under what circumstances would you want to create a view? Well, it could be that your select statements are fairly complex. And when you have to retype it time and time again, that can be time consuming and it can be prone to error. So suppose this was a really complicated select statement. I would have to recreate it time and time again, or I could just go select star from and give me the name of the view. Now, another reason could be to hide certain columns or rows from the end user. For example, maybe I don't want to show anything which is in October or November. Well, I can use the where clause that. So where price date is less than, and I'll put a date here. So I'm just going to add a bit more code to get rid of the squiggly underlines, go there. And I'm also going to write a drop view if exists, which works with SQL Server 2016, I think Service Pack 1 or later. So now I've got this slightly more complicated view. If I do a select statement from the view, I no longer have access in this select statement to October or November. Or maybe I want to hide certain columns. So maybe I want to hide the region column. Well, I can do that in the select clause. I can say exactly what columns that I want to have in my view. And then in the select statement, I no longer have access to those columns. Now you might say, well, that's fine. But all I could do is just query the original table. And the answer is, well, maybe you can, maybe you can't. This is when we get into security. And I can say that a particular role has access to say a view to be able to select the view, but not to the underlying table. So I might deny access to the select with that table. Now that means that I can view the view, but I can't view the underlying table. How does that work? It is something called ownership chaining. If the same person owns the view that owns the table, then you can get a situation where they can select from the view, but not select from the underlying table. But because of this ownership chaining, they can still use the view, even though they can't use the table. So this is about securing your data. So what other circumstances would you use views? Well, it could be some external applications. It could be a lot easier to use a view than a select statement. I just say, use this view, use this stored procedure instead of a select statement. The difference between a view and a stored procedure, I can use a view in a select statement. I don't use a select statement in a stored procedure. A stored procedure is rather a list of commands that run. What else? Well, I can use a view as a starting point for another select statement. So let's say I want the price date and the sum of the price group by the price date, order by the price date. So I can use whatever is in this first view in this second select statement without having to replicate, for instance, in this case, the where clause. And what I can now do is create another view based on this second select statement. And then if I wanted to, I could then create a third view or some more select statements based on this view. Just bear in mind that in views, you can't use the order by. So I will comment that out. And now I can do a select statement based on this second 
view and I can insert my order by there. So this means that I can simplify each individual select statement. I'm not trying to create a huge select statement with a lot of complexity all at the same time. Now, another reason for using views is what happens if your source data changes, not in just terms of the data, but the structure. So I've got this house prices table, I'll go into design and I can change, for instance, the region to region name, and I can change the price date to date of price, for instance. So the structure has changed. So what happens now if I try and run my view, either of them, based on this new data, this new structure, you can see invalid column. So now my view no longer works, either of them. So what I can do is to change this first view, so I don't have to change this second view, and just get it back into the format that it's expecting. So here we have a price date. So we have a new column, if I refresh, of date of price. So we have date of price as price date. So here we have the alias of the column, going back to what this view now expects. So if I just press Control, Shift and R, we'll get rid of these squiggly underlines. Oh, there's another one that needs changing. So now if I recreate this first view, I don't have to touch this second view. And now if I run this second view, it runs fine. So what I often do is create a table, table house prices, but I call it table house prices A. And then I create a view based on that. So let me just do that now. So now I have changed the table from table house prices to table house prices A. I've created a view based on that, just a simple select statement as you can see. And now I have renamed two of the columns. And needless to say, neither view now works. So what I need to do is change my existing view. So now to update this view, all I need to do is to say, okay, this is the current field and I want to have the alias which all of the views are expecting and then we have a region name and so on. So in this video, we've had a look at a good five different reasons for creating views. When you want to save a select statement within the database, when you want to hide certain columns and rows, perhaps it would be easier for other applications to use it, when you want to use the view as a starting point for another view or select statement, and when you want a central point for the saved views so that if something breaks in the original data structure, you only have to change one view. Now, if I can help further with SQL, please have a look at my YouTube channel where you'll find lots of practice activities and other videos. Alternatively, why not have a look at my video courses, where in a little over one hour, nine hours, or 29 hours, we'll have a look at TSQL. So all of these courses do have a look at views as well as many other things. Why the reason for three different courses? Well, it depends how deeply you want to go into SQL and how much time that you've got available. In addition, I have many other courses on a variety of subjects such as Power Platform, Azure, Reporting Software, Fundamentals and Microsoft Office. You can see those by going to my website, idodata.com. Well, thank you very much for joining me on this course. If you've liked it, then why not click that like and then click that subscribe and the bell. That way you'll be notified of any new videos. I'm Philip Burton for idodata.com. Thank you very much for watching this and keep learning.